So who is David Meister? According to Wikipedia, Dr. Meister holds a bachelor's degree in mathematics, economics, and statistics from the University of Birmingham in 1968, a master's degree in operations research from the London School of Economics in 1971, and obtained his doctorate in business from the Harvard Business School in 1976. During the period when he was obtaining his formal education, he worked as a statistician at Bell Canada in Montreal and as a lecturer in economics and statistics at the Polytechnic of the South Bank, now known as London South Bank University. As an academic, his initial teaching, research and publishing focus was in the area of logistics, transportation and operations management. He authored or co-authored seven books while teaching at the University of British Columbia in uh, 1976 from 1976 to 1978 and then later at the um, Harvard Business School between 1979 and 1985. In 1985 he left Harvard Business School to spend full-time consulting to professional firms. In June of 1997 he published Managing the Professional Service Firm. Four years later he co-authored The Trusted Advisor. Both of these books have dominated the thinking and business models of our largest consulting firms, including the big four accounting firms. We probably have him to blame for the leverage model and the byline trusted advisor or trusted business advisor that so many accounting firms today feature in their marketing and their websites. Certainly PwC relied on the leverage model when I worked there between 2005 and 2010 as a manager and later senior manager. Essentially, leverage meant that I was paid about $50 to $60 an hour and billed at between $550 and $575. Don't try that business model at home, though, if you run a small firm. At the tail end of the 20th century, success in professional services meant embracing the leverage model. So just what is this leverage model anyway? Management consulting guru David Meister identified three different kinds of client work. The first type he called brains projects. In these projects, the client's problem is at the forefront of professional or technical knowledge, or at least is of extreme complexity. The key elements of this type of professional service are creativity, innovation, and the pioneering of new approaches, concepts or techniques, in effect, new solutions to new problems. The firm that targets this market will be attempting to sell its services on the basis of the high professional craft of its staff. In essence, their appeal to their market is, hire us because we're smart. They usually involve highly skilled and highly paid professionals. Few procedures are routine. Accordingly, the opportunities for leveraging top professionals with juniors are relatively limited. In case you missed it, New solutions to new problems has nothing to do with the core business of an accounting firm. Clients with gray hair problems seek out firms with experience. In these projects, the firm sells its knowledge, its experience, and its judgment. In effect, they are saying, hire us because we have already solved this particular problem before. Since for gray hair type projects, the problems to be addressed are somewhat more familiar, at least some of the tasks to be performed, Particularly the early ones are known in advance and can be specified and delegated. The opportunity is thus provided to employ more juniors to accomplish these tasks. What Dr. Meister calls procedural problems usually involve a well-recognized and familiar problem. While there is still a need to customize to some degree, the steps necessary to accomplish this are somewhat programmatic. The client may have the ability and resources to perform the work itself but turns to the professional firm because the firm can perform the service more efficiently, because the firm is an outsider, or because the client's own staff capabilities to perform the activity are somewhat constrained and are better used elsewhere. In essence, the professional firm is selling its procedures, its efficiency, its availability. Or, in other words, Hire us because we know how to do this and can deliver it effectively. Large accounting and consulting firms have audit, tax and consulting specialists. A practitioner in a small CPA firm invariably offers tax and compilation work, because overwhelmingly, that is what our clients need. Occasionally they may provide audit and other assurance work. 
Some of the tax work is quite complex and is certainly beyond the capabilities of junior staff in a small firm. Senior staff typically focus on maintaining client relationships, the more difficult tax work, and reviewing compilations. Bookkeeping and compilation is quite procedural, and leverage would be possible, but that is only true if the billing rates are adequate. Each year, Industry Canada produces financial performance data by industry and firm size. The most profitable small firms pay virtually nothing in labor. This suggests that successful small firms have developed a more effective model, and don't rely on leverage. At the hatchery, this is the approach that we recommend. We offer a professional development course in practical statistics at our business school. This isn't the typical twaddle delivered by overeducated academics at university. It looks at the business environment we actually work in. It examines the size of Canadian companies, which are overwhelmingly very small. And, it looks at the services CPAs actually provide to owner-managed companies that work in home offices, shopping centers, and on Main Street in small towns and suburbs across the country. We believe that marketing begins, with understanding the market.